I'm Shalina Tobin, aka Posh Nosh Girl, and today I'm joined by the talented chef Darcio Henriquez. Hailing originally from Portugal, Darcio has learned his trade with the likes of the legendary Joel Rubichon in Paris before working his way up to head chef at the fantastic Michelin starred Celeste restaurant in the Lanesborough Hotel in London. Hello, Darcio, how are you? Hello, Cindy. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you too. So you are due to open on September the fourth. What have you been doing during the lockdown period? So the lockdown, for being honest, I never expect to be five months at home in my life uh, with the lockdown, with the virus, with the things like that. But I can say that uh, I think I have luck in the end to be in the lockdown. Uh, During the time with the family. Yes, because also uh, my daughter have born in the lockdown. Oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. So in the end, I spend a little bit more time with the family, with the daughter, with the, my wife and everything. <laughs> Sleepless course, nights. Yes, yes. Of course, always some work around uh, recipes, a few things, some exercise, I discover, uh, now I discover new parks near to the house uh, with the family and uh, things like that. And uh, in the end it was nice. It's boring someday yeah. because uh, I didn't expect at all to be uh, five months at home. Yes. In the end, I can say, I can say that uh, I am one person that he did a big quarantine. Uh, I try, I try to, to go to Portugal a little, but to fly now with the daughter and everything. So I stay in London, I stay here around, I didn't move. Uh, I can't say that was a big lockdown for me too. Right. Well, originally you are from Portugal and uh, is, is that where your love for cooking began? Uh, yes, of course. So uh, I'm from Portugal. In the end, I am... Uh, in one little city near to the sea, in the Portugal, in the middle of the Portugal, that uh, uh, we can find the traditions for the fish. Uh, the traditions there is to dry the fish in the sun. So we can, we can buy some fish outside in the sun. Uh, in the same time is, is a moment that I have uh, some mountains near to the house that uh, in the, when I was young, I remember myself to, to pick some mushrooms with the family, to do these kind of activities. Oh, lovely. And of course, my, my, my inspirations, everything is start from Portugal. And so, I mean, was your mom, she was a, a big cook, so did she teach you? Yes, in the, in the end, I start with my mom to cook more uh, pastries, more cook, more, more uh, um, cakes, more things like that. Uh, is is the things that I was doing more with my my mother. Right. But uh, after that, I discovered that it's not exactly this one that I want to be, and I want to become a chef. Exactly. Oh, amazing! And so, did you do like a formal training in college? Did you go and uh, learn in culinary school? Yes. So basically, I stayed in Portugal, in the in the Italy, that is the city that I was born, in the kitchen school. I did my kitchen school. I did some trainings around Portugal. I did uh, some jobs there too. And uh, after I moved myself for another experience and uh, things. Right. To learn. Well, well you, moved, you moved on to working with uh, the famous Jean Rubouchon. And at the time it was in, it was like one of the world's 20th best yeah. restaurants. So how did the opportunity of working there come to you? So I, I will go a little bit behind of my life for try to explain you uh, sure, exactly this situation. situation. Yeah. That basically, so uh, I finished the school. In the end, uh, I find a job. Uh, I started working in the uh, traditional restaurant. I became a, a head chef very young in Portugal, in the, in the traditional restaurant. Okay. After the work there in a, a, few, a few years, I understand that I want to do something more in my life. I understand 
with that I want you to learn more things to improve myself to do this kind of uh, of moves in the life. So uh, it's, it's a nice story in the end because uh, I was uh, to plan to come to London. Mm -hmm. So when I finished the school, I my English, I believe that was not the same than than it is today. And so I finished the school and I went to the private school to learn English for to come to London to, to try to find the, uh, my dream in London. And, and what was, why did you want to come to London? Of all the places, why did you choose this place? I have a dream a long time ago to come to London because I always, I saw the, the big chefs in the world, they have passed here in London. They have a big experience here. And it was my dream too, to become a big chef, to, to come to London, to see these big cities. But it was funny because in the end, I was in holidays with the family in, in, uh, in Paris, and I love Paris. So I decided my alone to go ahead to Paris. Okay. My French was not good at all. My English was much better at the moment. Uh -huh. So I left the job in Portugal. Uh, some family called me crazy because in the end I didn't have a job at all in Paris. I went, I found a house, uh, I went with a bag, nothing, nothing special. Wow. So I stay, I stay uh, two months, almost two months in Paris. I tried to find a job. It was difficult because my French was not good enough for, uh, <laughs> for, uh, yeah. for trying to find a job, a proper job. Yeah, so it's very adventurous to, to go to a city you don't know anyone and you don't know the language. So how did you, how did you, how did you even start? So, so basically what I was doing was uh, to try to go behind my dream that was working with the, the best chefs in the world for, for learning more things. So, but before that, I found a little job in a small restaurant in Paris. Mm -hmm that he opened my doors. The chef who was speaking in English, I was uh, in the beginning speaking in English. I started to learn some French. And uh, in this time, I still always looking for my dream uh, to go uh, uh, Joël Robuchon, these big chefs in the world. Right. After two months that I was working in this small restaurant, I have uh, one opportunity to go inside of the, the Joël Robuchon in the Saint-Germain. That was two Michelin stars, and he's still two Michelin stars. Yeah. And yes, it was the, one of the 20 best restaurants in the world. Mm -hmm. After that, I can say that was, uh, it was hard. It was very hard for me to start there because uh, I was not ready. Uh, I was not ready with the language. I was not ready. Even the skills, I was not ready. Uh, but uh, Joël Robuchon is a, is a big school in the world to everyone in the end. It was the, the, the chef of the century for some reason. That uh, is, a, is a big school inside of the restaurant of that. Okay. And so, I mean, you, f you feel like you were not ready at all you, without learning the language or, or in, as you say, don't have enough of the skills. What, what were the reasons that you think Joel Bouchon gave you a job? I, I give always my best. I give a hundred percent of me for stay in this, in this environment, mm -hmm. in this restaurant. And uh, in the beginning it was very difficult for me. I, I can say that it was difficult to French, try to understand exactly the good expressions that they were saying to me for do this one or for do that. But uh, my motivation too, uh, it let me stay there. So after, after a few, a few times, I started to understand, I started to uh, 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 be stronger with, uh, everyone in the team and I learn more things and to be confident to work there. After that, they start also, we start to be more friendly, more uh, uh, this environment. Yeah? <laughs> so you really <laughs> pushed yourself, you really worked yeah, hard. I pushed myself, I pushed myself in the beginning, that is true. Yeah. But, uh, 
because in the end, it's a big name in the world as well, Ruby Sean. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so. stars in the world, the chef of the century. It yeah. was uh, one of the best uh, restaurants in the world. So I have everything for me, for my career in the future, for push myself, for stay there, for learn, for, for be in another school, because uh, I can say that uh, it's completely a school there, the, 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 the techniques, the, the ambience, everything there is, was amazing. I, I'm grateful to stay there to work at yeah. home. And, and what, what, is, what is Joel Robuchon like as a person? Give me, if you can explain the personality and how was he like as a mentor to you? So I, I, I would be, I would say one thing that in the end, in all my career, I was working uh, uh, three years for Joel Robuchon. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I never saw him in my wow. life. Yeah, because, because he have a, a lot of restaurants in the world. He stayed long times in Singapore. Okay. And once, once that he have came to the restaurant, it was in holidays. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh wow! It's true. So you true. never, you really, truly never got to meet him. So who was the person course, training you? Of course, the chefs that they work for him, they pass the message that they want to transmit. Yeah, and uh, one of the first things that they we can learn in the kitchens of the Joel Robuchon is to, to respect the ingredients. That means uh, the fish, we need to respect the fish and the meats and even the vegetables is very important because in the end, everything was alive before we start to eat and uh, uh, we need to know exactly how to respect the, these important products for everyone in the world and to, to don't waste them and to treat them properly. Is this when the first rules that we're going to learn? Lesson. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, oh, wow, that's quite funny. I was, in, I thought you'd it's maybe funny, 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 because yeah. you had been there for so long. So, yeah. who? I mean, he was obviously a massive inspiration for you to, you know, want to work <laughs> in his restaurant. Who? Who are the other chefs that really inspire you? I have some chefs also that inspire me. When I was young, a little bit younger, that was Gordon Ramsay inspired me too. The the all the shows that he was doing in the in the in the television. Yeah. In the end, I can say that uh, when I saw him in the television in Portugal, when I was in Portugal, it, it was my dream to work for him. Okay. It never happens. It never happens, and it's the life like that. Uh, <laughs> and I think. Uh, I think I have the lucky too, the, the shoes, the, the big chefs too in the, in the, in the world. Yeah, and absolutely. Then, and um, I mean, so you were with, um, you at the restaurant for two years before you moved on to Shanghai, is that right? No, no. Okay. So basically it was eight months in Paris. Uh-huh, okay. After that I have moved to Shanghai. Oh, wow, after eight months. And what was the reason you moved to Shanghai? So Shanghai, I have a nice opportunity. So my wife is a chef too. Okay. And, uh, and uh, we have an opportunity to, together to open the first Portuguese restaurant in Shanghai. Wow. That, that uh, it was, I was not expect, expecting this offer that it comes to me, if I'll be honest. So it came this offer, I was thinking about China, Shanghai, I never have been, why not? So we decided and we went together to, to Shanghai to open the first Portuguese restaurant there. That 100% uh, was another big jump and another experience in my life that I have, I have. It, it was amazing too. It was an amazing experience, but again, there must have been a language barrier. Oh, 100%. There. <laughs> They're much more than Paris. Yeah. Because yeah. in the beginning, I was thinking, okay, um, a lot of people will speak English. It's true. But I think that uh, I didn't have the luck that the people that was working with me speak English. So in the end, it was, was complicated to me to work in the, in, the, in the restaurant 
was no big restaurant, it was no in the hotel, it was a particular restaurant that uh, the, the, for speak the language, the Mandarin, mm -hmm. is difficult. I can say that it's difficult without to be in the school, without to, to be uh, studying the Mandarin, is, is difficult, was difficult. In the end, the, the, the foresee the new culture, the, the new language in Shanghai, the first month was di very difficult for me too, mm -hmm. because uh, it's like we say, the language, the culture, the, the ambience, the, the smells, everything was different for me. I, and first, I never have been in China before that. Yeah. And uh, after, so I tried to build a restaurant, a Portuguese restaurant, that it was a little bit more difficult than I was expect, for be honest, because uh, uh, China is so big and there are some different regulations uh, between, uh, for example, Shanghai and Hong Kong. That means in Hong Kong, all the Portuguese products, we can find them, but in Shanghai was much more difficult because uh, in the end, uh, the government, it doesn't let me pass to Shanghai. A few, oh, a few oh. years. Yeah. Oh, that's, that, that's quite, um... It's unfortunate. Yes, yes. And in the end, I didn't was ready to for go to China because um, I, didn't, I didn't know about the, the Facebook. And I didn't know about the Google. I didn't know about the, that we need to use a VPN for, for trying to have these kind of conditions. Right. So in the end, all my phone that I have, it didn't work. I don't know exactly what happens. All the apps is Android, and I don't know what they can, what they can do. But I discovered the VPN, so it was <laughs> was another jump in my life. It was another jump in my life. It was funny. It was funny. Well, I, I honestly I find you very courageous because to go to all of these places, not to know any languages, and to just try, it's you know, it's it's a very <laughs> good message. But but. Uh, for, for my opinion, I think that it's important too that uh, we can change our, ourselves for, for be better, for learn new things, for uh, be a better chef. Uh, in China, it was a new experience for me too. Uh, I like, uh, I love China. It was amazing for me. Uh, it was not for all the life. It was for one moment of my life too. But I learned the 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 culture of the Chinese people, the food. I taste a lot of different food, different places. It was it was uh, it was amazing too. It was difficult also. Yeah, the language. The language is always difficult because yeah. I remember one story that I was in the kitchen and the, it came the way that it was in the first place and he started talking with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, I don't understand it. <laughs> We started talking, so what do you want? Tell me what you want. And in the end, you want just some French fries. Okay, <laughs> you can take them and you can go now, I understand. You ultimately, you came back to, you went to London, which is your, your ultimate destination. You really wanted to come back, but you did spend some more time with Joel Rubichon at that restaurant. So did you go, did you go back to Paris first or you came? No, so, so it was like the uh, Joël Robuchon uh, here in London, they have a new chef before mm -hmm. that was exactly the same chef that was working in Paris. Okay. So the, the, the chef that was working in Paris, he came to London for a new experience also to him. That I was deciding to move to China. I came to London again without a job without nothing, and a house. And after the first week, I went there again, I talked with them, and uh, I decided that was a good option to stay there again. So I stayed two years, uh, I work here in London, in the Atelier de Revolution, that was in Covent Garden. Okay. Now it's closed, yeah. they open in another place. And uh, yes, so it, it basically was uh, uh, similar, the same thing that was in Paris, they come to London, Okay. So I was working almost with the, the, the head chef, the sous chefs in the beginning was the same. 
And your wife, Liliana, she was with you in, in Rupachon as well? No, no. She went, she went to work to the Savoy. Okay. In the end, in the end she doesn't like... She liked, she loved Michelin stars. She loved Michelin stars, but she always say that he's no the kitchen for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. And then you moved on to Celeste at the Lanesborough. Exactly. So I just want to say something about the Joao Michelin too. That is a mashed potato. I think everyone in the, in the world he have listened about something about the mashed potato, how is good. And uh, in the end, uh, it's true what uh, Joel Robichon is saying that uh, some customers, they order the mashed potato instead of the desserts. Uh, in, oh, in really? The desserts, they take mashed potato. And it's true. I have wow. so, this, I have so, also me, I have give them to, to mashed potato. Okay. How good it was the mashed potato. It's and what is the secret of the mashed potato? What is the secret ingredient which makes it so special? It's no secret ingredient. Is butter. It's and just butter. Yes, is mashed potato is a mashed potato, potato and butter. That's it. That yes, but that you need to be the right butter and the right potatoes. <laughs> and it also has to be whisked for a very long time. Is that right? Whisked for a very long time. So basically, I, the the recipe of the the mashed potato is hot potatoes, that is a, a very small potatoes, white potatoes. Cook with the skin, take out the skin, pass, uh, put a little bit of milk and put exactly the same amount of potato and butter. This wow. is uh, exactly. And uh, so if we say, if we put one kilo of potato, we put, put one, one kilo, kilo of butter. butter. We're gonna have gently the, the butter in the potato, we're going to whisk it, when I whisk until it comes with a nice uh, consistency for, for you to remember. So basically, it's true. It's, it's, uh, some people say, oh no, it's not true. Yes. It's the, true. All the time that I was working <laughs> in the Revolution, some customers, he said, no, 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 this is for me. I want extra much, please. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Wow, so we have the truth. <laughs> it's not a myth. <laughs> no myth, it's not a myth. So, so how, how that, did, Sorry. Tell me, tell me, sorry. No, no, go on, please. So after that, so after Joao Robichon, I moved to Celeste, like we were starting before. So how did, how did, the, um, how did the opportunity come to you to work, to work in Celeste? Did you apply? Yes, I applied because I want to, I want to see different things. I want to improve, still improve myself. I'm a kind of person that uh, I'm never happy with the things that I am doing. I always want more. I always try to see new things, new techniques. So uh, it was a moment for me. It was a good opportunity for me to move to Celeste. In the end, the Celeste, when I was moving, was with Eric Frechon. Eric Frechon, he have also three Michelin stars in uh, in Paris. Yeah, that is a, another amazing chef. And uh, I meet twice Eric Frechon before he left the he left already the the Lansborough yeah. for one year. And uh, yes, he's is a French too, but is a little bit different style of the, the kitchen style, the food style that I have learned too. And how long, how much time was it before you came, became the head chef? So I started in the Lansborough at uh, two years, mm -hmm. two years, exactly. And uh, I start with the first sous chef, so the senior sous chef there in the Lansborough. And uh, after I have the opportunity, the, the executive chef, so at the moment, the Lansborough doesn't have executive chef. So it was not, when I started, it was no head chef in the Celeste. It was just one executive chef and it was after me. That was in charge in the Celeste, was a, a senior sous chef. After that, uh, the executive chef left and I have the opportunity to stay there and to keep going with the Michelin star and uh, to keep going uh, with everything that we was doing before together already. 
Right. And I mean, Celeste, it has to be one of my favorite dining rooms in London. I and agree. Yeah, it's, it's such a beautiful space. It must have been a wonderful feeling for you. And it was just in December 2019 that they actually appointed you the head chef. Yeah. So it was like, what, only three months before the lockdown? Yes, it was three months before the lockdown, but in the end, it's like I was hanged before because it was no executive chef, in the, it was no head chef in the building, it was just executive. Right. And in the end, I was in charge a little bit more time of the Celeste. Okay. And it was exactly like you said, it was one of the things that it, it made me move for the Celeste. It was a room. The oh. room of Celeste is something that we can say that is amazing. Nothing it, to say about yeah. It's so, it's so beautiful. And it's, so it's beautiful. also famous for its spectacular afternoon tea, as it is for the fine dining. Do That's you enjoy it. the creativity around, around it as well? Uh, of course, of course. I, I, I always try to work together, not in Celeste, but together with the afternoon tea, the breakfast. We, we always give a hand to everyone that it makes the, the service and for the customers to be happy. This is, is for that that we work in the end, to make everyone happy, to see the smile in the end of the, the meal. And uh, even, even if it's afternoon tea, is something that I will taste every day. We're gonna check every day the consistency. We try, we try to keep exactly the same standards, breakfast, afternoon tea, uh, lunch at Celeste, uh, dinner at Celeste, everything with the same standards because it's very important. It's not just, uh, it's not just uh, lunch and dinner, it's Celeste, as we talked about. Yeah. Celeste is different because it's the room, it's the, the ambiance, uh, uh, and the, all the guests that you go there, they expect after the seat in the table in the room, this is an amazing room, we need to be careful because it's just the room is amazing. So if the food after that, uh, <laughs> like that is going to be in trouble. <laughs> it, it's the whole experience and, and I can say that the food is is absolutely beautiful because I was there just like uh, I think I was probably be there in November and mm -hmm. um, and yeah the whole experience was absolutely lovely and um, and I really enjoyed the food as well I was there for lunch. Yeah, thank you. So how much um, what, what kind of where do you get your inspiration to create new mem uh, menus? So my inspiration, it comes from Portugal, a few things it comes from Portugal. Yeah. It's always in my blood, these kind of things, you know? Yes. The, the, the small techniques about the, the, the fish, how, how the beach near to my house, it was drying the fish out in the sun. So I, I tried to use a few techniques that I was, uh, uh, learning in the past. After that, of course, I have always the touch of uh, Joao Robuchon that I can say that was uh, uh, my big inspiration in the end. Yeah, absolutely. I try to put always a little bit my ADN in the plates, my little touch, my, my little flavors, my yeah. combinations. Is this one the point in the end? Uh, and uh, try to recreate uh, the best for the customers to, to, to make everyone happy. And, and what is the strangest request you've ever had in Celeste? In Celeste, uh, let me see, I don't remember, to be honest. <laughs> I, I, I think no one come in asking for chips? That is okay for me, that is okay. <laughs> that is okay. Maybe I have lucky, maybe I have lucky in, the, in, the, in there. Yeah. That the customers that I have to, no one they have asked me something special, different. I, I think they're all happy with what you give them. So there's no need to ask for yeah. anything different. <laughs> <laughs> and then do you have any, um, what is the biggest challenge that you faced in your life that you feel like you've really come back from? So the, the big challenge for me, it was in the beginning how to make a, a, a life with the family, with the Michelin stars and uh, even my wife to be a chef, to work everything. But uh, after that, I think that uh, in the end, if we love 
both of the sides, we can combine them. And uh, we can, I always still moving for uh, something, uh, new experience, some new ideas and new creations. So the future, I cannot say the future, but uh, I try to go ahead with a few things, with new ideas, with new creations. Um, maybe it's the big challenge. I can't say that is this one to him always, uh, to be always no happy with the things that we are doing. I want always more. So I can always improve myself, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, now that you're head, you're, you're, you're the head chef, how do you improve yourself? What are the things that you, you know, you do to, to keep learning? Because obviously, you know, you, you don't train with other chefs anymore either. So how do you keep, as a head chef, how do you keep growing? So in the end, I have lucky because uh, like we said, the lockdown. So I stay at home. I'm at home at five months and believe I have studied a lot. I have read a lot of things, new techniques, new ideas. Mm. And uh, it was one thing that, I, so in the end, I, I, can, I can say that I was enjoying too, because uh, I have time for still more, for improve myself, to read books, to, to see some movies, to see to, to new techniques. And the, this one is the thing that so I am the head chef, so now, I want to show the team also mm. and to everyone mm. that I am able to do more and more and more and more. You know? and, and how do you inspire and motivate your own team? I, I, I can say that uh, I, I am gently, I am no uh, aggressive chef. I can say that. That uh, in the end, I try to be, I try to make the family inside of the kitchens because in the end we're still working a lot of hours we still uh, stay a lot of days together we still stay long times together i try more than possible to to make them feel a family everyone to make happy because uh, because our food it doesn't depend just me it depends to everyone and uh, if we are not happy together the food, the customer can see that in the food. So that means my ambience in the kitchen, I am no a chef uh, that I am shouting all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to explain everything that I know, everything that I have learned. I try to explain one, twice the times that they need for we be together, for we build a team and to build a family. We stay long time together, long hours together. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, you mentioned family um, and I'm thinking of Portugal. You mentioned earlier you didn't get to go to uh, Portugal over the lockdown period. But how often do you manage to go back home? I was uh, before twice by year, twice by year. Twice it was year. Yes. And do, you, do you think London is a place you will stay now or do you think maybe one day you go back home? I like London. I like London. But uh, like I have been in Paris, like I have been in Shanghai, I don't know the future. Right. And, uh, and uh, if something happens, I am, uh, who never knows that I can move off London for another country. I don't know. I, I don't say Portugal, maybe another one. Maybe another city. Wow. So. Um, <laughs> but this time with the job. Pardon? This time with the job. This time with the job, <laughs> and also uh, maybe knowing the language as well. Knowing the language. <laughs> you started oh, before I know you know. Three languages now: so French, English, and Portuguese. That is better already. That's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so how now, is your now French? Now it's that I can move. That it's okay for me. Are your French <laughs> fluent? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, so the French, the French <laughs> that I learn. And now it's 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 much better. Now it's much better. Wow, that's fabulous. In the end, in the end uh, all the chefs, a lot of chefs that I was working, especially for example in London, even in Joel Hubuchon in London, uh, ev uh, ninety percent was French. So in the end, we still speak French inside of the kitchens, right. and uh, uh, and. Uh, I didn't lose, I didn't lose the, the French that I have learned in, in the past. Yeah, so. 
Fabulous. So, um, so tell me something about yourself that I couldn't possibly know. You know everything. <laughs> I'm sure there's something you can tell me. I told you, I told you my past that you didn't know before a little <laughs> bit, but I did in Portugal. But what was the move, how I have moved for Paris, how I have yeah. moved for Shanghai. This is a little bit my secret, how I have moved between them. Right. After that, I, I have no big secrets, not, nothing special Do that I can have, share. you um, have any other passion other than cooking? Yes. A different passion? Yes. I love painting and I love uh, playing music. Oh, amazing. Do you play instrument? Yeah, at home, just for myself. <laughs> you can't, you can't play something for us? No, no at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what, is, no. what is the instrument? Is it guitar? It's a ukulele. Okay, so Portuguese. It's a small guitar. It's a small guitar. Yeah. Small guitar. Oh, how lovely. Well, maybe one day we get to hear. <laughs> so you, Liliana, and your daughter. Exactly, exactly. That's it. <laughs> it's been wonderful chatting with you. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, it's been a pleasure to get to know you better. Thank you. Guys, if you want to, uh, if you want to follow Darcio on Instagram, he's at Darcio H. And I'm at Posh Noshgal. Thank you so much, Darcio. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye.